NTA. You can't beat the reach. UAC unscripted. Hilarious. Go shorty. It's your birthday. Go shorty. <laughs> unscripted. Talk something, you know. Talk something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. UAC unscripted. Nigeria's newest family fun. Showing on NTA Network at 30 p.m. every Monday. UAC unscripted. <laughs> The EU Emerging Trusts for Africa is a joint effort between European and African leaders to tackle the root causes of instability, forced displacement and irregular migration. European Union Emergency Trust for Africa inaugurates seven new projects to enhance conflict management and stability in the Northeast region. And this new scheme basically says that if you declare your income, pay your taxes, you not pay interest, you not pay penalty, but with the first step to ensure that Nigeria becomes or becomes greater. Carrot before the stick. A strategy by government to mobilize citizens to perform their civic duties as Nigeria begins tax Thursday. Senate passes a bill for the amendment of the National Open University, just as the House of Representatives moves to establish a regulatory framework for water resources sector. And acting president Yemi Oshin Bajo condoles government and people of Kano. Good evening and a warm welcome. I am Laure Balahassan in Abuja, the nation's capital. Jennifer is in our Lagos studios. Good evening and a warm welcome to, le to the news. Dibabari in Port Harcourt. and a warm welcome to the news. European Union Emergency Trust Fund for Africa has inaugurated seven new projects to enhance IDP resilience and conflict management in the Northeast. The projects aimed at fostering stability in the region to respond to challenges of migration and displacement will also include neighboring countries of Niger, Cameroon and Chad. Mohamed Goni reports. The new EU-funded projects are aimed at strengthening the resilience of internally displaced persons and other vulnerable groups and contributing to the stabilization of the Nigeria's northeast states of Borno, Adamawa, Gombe and Yobe states. Over 370,000 people will directly benefit from the seven projects. The EU Emerging Trust for Africa is a joint effort between European and African leaders to tackle the root causes of instability, forced displacement and irregular migration. Represented by his deputy Usman Mamundrukwa, Governor Kashim Shetima implored the implementing partners to continue to collaborate with the Borno State Government in identifying potential areas of assistance with a view to achieving the maximum benefit of the project. Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Professor Babagana Umara said, the EU-funded projects will enhance the resettlement drive of the state government. The EU has approved the sum of 140 million euros through the government of our state with the view to supporting resilience. Proven international implementing partners, which include Action Against Hunger, the British Council, International Rescue Committee, Mexico, UNICEF, Danish and Norwegian Refugee Councils, will execute the projects over a period ranging from two to four years. In Maiduguri, Mohamed Goni, NTA News. The federal government says it is committed to improving the standard of Nigerian prisons in line with global best practices. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdul Rahman Dambazo, made the remark at the presentation of a report on the assessment of children in conflict with the law in Nigeria. Marjana to Adam Saeed reports. There is no again saying that the well-being of children is a fundamental priority to any positive society. This official and public presentation of the report on the assessment of children in conflict situation with the law in Nigeria 
is aimed to support credible intervention programs by Nigerian government and development partners in addressing the challenges. Conflict appears. Uh, uh, most of the victims are women and children. So we are now talking about children. So there is need for us to do a lot to do in terms of parental care. The Nigeria Prison Service take another step towards improving the policies and services that protect its children. We need to do so many things. We need to conduct so many researches and to see what we are really doing in the 19th and the 20th century that we need to do more because the issues and conflict and the environments are changing. We are worried with number of children who are crossing national borders are in conflict with the law. This, because of the global crisis in the world and our crisis also in the northeast region. The Controller General of Prisons, Jafar Ahmed, believes that the document will provide protection of the rights of children in detention as well as treatment, rehabilitation and reformation. Stakeholders here agree that the interests of the child should be protected not only during conflict situations. In Abuja, Marijana to Adam Said, NTN News. The theatre commander Operation Lafia Adoli, Major General Ibrahim Atahiru, has reassured Nigerians that the fight against terrorism remains on course as troops continue to sustain the temple if the operation to clear the remnant of Boko Haram terrorists. He gave the assurance during a media briefing in Meiduguri. Maimuna Garba reports. The theatre commander said troops have conducted several clearance operations to rid the hinterlands of fleeing terrorists at Chukungudu in the northern part of Borno State up to Ajirimulai, Umarari and Jimtilo at the outskirts of Maiduguri, where over 800 settlements of Boko Haram terrorists were cleared and 404 insurgents were killed, including some commanders. Some items, arms and ammunition were also recovered. He said the successful conduct of Operation Deep Punch denied the terrorist freedom of action in some Disa forests, while Operation Rowan Kada by troops of multinational drain tax force is succeeding in clearing the general area along the fringes of Lake Chad. On the whole, 97 IED incidents, including persons born and vehicle born IED, were recorded during this period. Aside employing fiscal security measures, troops of Operation Lake Adoli have also made it a point of duty to sensitize the public on this development. He said in the last couple of months, over 19,000 persons were rescued, arrested over 800 Boko Haram suspects, as well as fish smugglers, Boko Haram logistics suppliers, and drug peddlers, among others. Memuna Garba, NTA News. And still talking security, former Chief of Staff General Martin Luther Aguay says military approach alone has never proven successful in the quest to eradicate terrorism in a given territory. General Aguay said this at the 2017 Nigerian Army Day Celebration Seminar and Chief of Army Staff Award Ceremony. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa was at the Army Resource Center, Abuja, venue of the event. The annual week-long Army Day program provides platform to assess the performance of the Nigerian Army, reflect on the contributions of fallen heroes who paid supreme sacrifice for the security and unity of the nation, and also set goals for preceding year. At the grand finale of the 2017 edition, former Chief of Defense Staff General Martin Luther Away noted that the Army has been overstretched with series of internal security operations. He, however, acknowledged the gallantry of the army and the development of strategies to counter emerging security challenges, particularly the Boko Haram insurgency. First generation warfare is not a one day affair. It takes a long time. And because the economic, the social and the political must be together, we have to help the military. So much development have been recorded and we must give tribute to all the past service chiefs of the army and indeed all our officers and soldiers. Highlighting the strategic overview of Nigerian Army's fight against insurgency, the former commander Operation Lafia Adoli and the current force commander Multinational Joint Task Force, Major General Loki Irabo, 
stressed the need for all arms of government to be educated on their roles in the war against insurgency. Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee has appointed 30 lawyers as senior advocates of Nigeria. The only female among the successful applicants is Olua Toyin Bashoru. The list was announced by the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court, Mrs. Hadiza Mustafa. The successful candidates emerged from 72 that participated in the final interview. Nigerian youths have been advised to see themselves as agents of development by imbi imbibing virtues that will unite the nation. The views were expressed by speakers at a one-day youth summit on unity and peaceful coexistence organized by the National Orientation Agency in collaboration with the Real Master Plan Resources. Basi Ita Ipang reports. National Baseline Youth Survey 2012 indicates that youth constitute more than 60% of the Nigerian population. This explains the potential youth hold for change and positive action and nation building. So when the youths come together and refuse to be given over to things that will breach the peace in our country, we are going to have peace. Any environment that is characterized by violence it will be difficult for you to attain your potentials of leadership. APC National Youth Leader and other speakers maintained that restructuring is not what the nation needs now, but peaceful coexistence. What we need is all about patriotism. If we are patriotic, both the leaders and the followers, I think we'll go a long way and making this country great. But we know the import of peace. Without peace, there is nothing anybody can do to bring development. Yeah. The summit provided opportunity for the youth to speak on their minds on the type of Nigeria they want to see today and in the future. We want to see one Nigeria. Uh, we want to see a Nigeria where youth voice count. A 100-page book on exploring the power of Nigeria national anthem was presented to the public. Basi Taikba, NTA News. And turning our attention now to the legislature, a bill for the amendment of the National Open University of Nigeria Act 2017 has been passed by the Senate. The bill, which was presented by Senator Jibrin Barrow Kano North, seeks to amend the existing legislation with a view to removing perception of the public about the university. National Assembly correspondent Wazir Zayanu has details. Preconceived notions from certain quarters about the National Open University were based on two concepts, correspondence and part-time. These are some of the reasons why law graduates from the school are not admitted into the Nigeria Law School or included into the National Youth Service course scheme. The National Open University, as uh, currently run, depends critically on virtual learning <coughs> and students' individ individ individual research. Hence, the need for improvement uh, and introduction of helpful learning tools as presented by ICT. While passing the bill after a close-by-close -close examination in a committee of the whole, Senate President Bukola Saraiki described the amendments as timely and in tune with global best practices. We hope that this will go a long way in further deepening the le learning that our students have in the open university mechanism. Raising a point of order, Senator Duro Fashi Ekiti North called on INEC to ensure that the July 8th elections in Oshun West to fill the vacant seat of late Senator Ishaka Adeliki are credible in spite of series of allegations. Senate are aware that Oshun West indigents are the terrorists of a free and fair by election where their votes will count. Some senators advise the Oshun West electorate to respect the memory of late Senator Ishaka Adeliki by abiding by the electoral laws. Outside plenary, Senator Kabiru Marafa Zamfara Central has refuted publications on the social media in which he was alleged to have said that Senate President should become acting president. The issues we were discussing that day has got nothing to do with power vacuum or, uh, or, or power pressure or whatever. So I now said the assertion made by Senator Abaribe was wrong, that President Buhari ought to be commended by Nigerians by transmitting power at any time he is traveling out of this country. 
from the National Assembly, Wazir Ziyan, NTN News. In the meantime, leader of the Southern Senators Caucus, Senator Hope Uzodima, assured Nigerians that re-emergence of the caucus will promote and strengthen national security. Again, Wazir Zayanu reports. Senator Hope Uzodima will marshal the affairs and activities of the newly established Southern Senators Forum. The caucus of Southern Senators is established to effectively address issues as they affect the three sections of the Southwest, Southeast, and South South regions that constitute the new caucus in the Senate. The whole idea is to be able to identify things that will be beneficial to the people, things that will help the interests of the country, things that can advance uh, development and the impact on the citizens. The caucus also seek to promote and strengthen national unity and security. If you look at the situation today in the country, where we must rise from wherever we are to work towards ensuring that we strengthen national unity, strengthen national cohesion, build consensus among the elites, it is it has not it's not going to be a work of one man alone. Hope Uzodima emerged chairman after being elected by 51 other lawmakers who formed the new caucus in the Senate. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NTA News. And still staying with the legislature, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish a regulatory framework for the water resources sector in Nigeria. The 14-section executive bill seeks, among other issues, to unbundle the water resources sector in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unkwo reports. Since 1976, when the 12 River Basin Development Authorities were established in Nigeria, their achievements have been limited by factors such as financial constraints, inadequate legislation, and poor regulatory framework. And to address this, the executive arm of government is proposing a legislation on the need to unbundle Nigeria's water resources sector. After the bill becomes law, what we will have will be 12 strong river basin development authorities. The reason for the bill is to commercialize the river basin development authorities and ensure that they are self-sustaining. Still on the executive arm of government, where a bill seeking to amend the Council of Ministers Evidence Act of 2004, sponsored by Representative Gideon Guani from Kaduna State, was passed for second reading. By substituting the words Council of Ministers with the words Executive Council of the Federation. Very simple adjustment to the act. So I put a question, and the question is the bill be now read a second time. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, serve it. The need to avert the imminent closure of University of Maiduguri due to rising insecurity posed by suicide bombers was addressed as moved by Representative Mohamed Tahir Munguno from Borno State. Also urge the security agencies to submit a comprehensive plan of action to maintain constant security of the university in particular and the host community of the school in general. The motion by Representative Olusegun Debomi on the need to address what he described as the persistent refusal of electricity distribution companies to connect communities to the national grid was also adopted. Almost all the states of the Federation have completed many electrification projects which are yet to be connected to the national grid. The House called on the Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing to urgently repair the protective guard on the bridges at Koton Karfe, Kogi State, moved by Representative Tony Woye from Anambra State. Wife of former President of Nigeria, Patience Jonathan, for the second time submitted a petition to the House on what she described as persistent unwarranted attack on her by some agencies of government. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The Water Resources Bill approved by the Federal Executive Council and passed for second reading in the House of Representatives would guard against indiscriminate drilling of boreholes in Nigeria when passed into law. The Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, said this at a meeting with the Nigerian Association of Hydrogeologists in Abuja. Musbao Danwahab reports. 
Necessitated by shortage of portable water supply in Nigeria, this yet to be covered search for these essential commodity anywhere it is available. And for those who have the means, drilling of borehole is the next option as larger percentage of Nigerians depends on groundwater for their water supply for domestic, industrial or agricultural use. With the proliferation of boreholes, experts have been raising alarm on severe danger to the environment and threat to water table. The underground water is being depleted. In areas where it's not being depleted, it's being polluted. If it's villages and small communities, it's understandable because the rate of depletion might not be much. But when in our urban cities, we resort to drilling boreholes everywhere. I really think we have a problem. This looming environmental hazard has been envisaged, and Water Resources Minister says the government has plans for improved regulation in the Water Resources Bill now gaining attention at the National Assembly. So we hope with the passage of that bill we'll be in a better position to regulate even the drillers. Water Resources Ministry and the Nigerian Association of Hydrogeologists are now hoping to collaborate to generate data bank that will guide borehole drilling practice while the government seeks to improve water supply in Abuja, Muspao, and Wahab, NC News. Acting President Yemi Oshinbaju says Africa has lost a great leader and a rare gem. The Muslim in Kanu, Al Hajimaitama Sule. This was during a condolence visit to the Emir of Kanu, Muhammad Usanusi II, in his palace. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. The acting president was received on arrival at the Malama Minikano International Airport by Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji, his deputy professor Hafiz Abubakar, and other members of the Kanu State Executive Council. Emir's palace was his first port of call where he condoled with the Emirate, government and people of Kano State. The death of Amasani, he said, was a great loss not only to Nigeria, but the entire African continent. Not only an incredible orator, as most people know him to be, the acting president noted late Meta Masuli was also a bridge builder who inspired the African youth to work towards making their countries great. I first met Alaji Meta Masuli when I was 15 years old on my first guitar from here. And he was then the minister, and uh, he came to give a lecture at the John F. Kennedy uh, essay competition. He gave the keynote address, the title of the keynote address was Africa has arrived. Professor Shimbajo enjoined Nigerians not to forget the wise counsels of the late Damasani and prayed for the repose of his soul. Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji thanked the acting president for not only sending a powerful delegation to attend the funeral, but coming personally to extend his condolence. This was corroborated by Emir Muhammad Sanusi II, who prayed for quick recovery of President Muhammad Buhari and the successful discharge of the acting president's additional responsibilities. The acting president was later at the residence of the deceased, where he condoled with the family. To immortalize late use of Meta Masili, Kano State Government has renamed Northwest University and a road after him. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And ahead on the news tonight, wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, speaks on the strategic importance of reducing infant mortality in Africa. Details when we return.
some reunions are worth waiting for. Reconnect your old SIM and we'll give you 6,000 Naira airtime. Also enjoy eight times bonus on every eTop Up recharge. The largest data network, Glow Unlimited. We, the people of this community, because before people will not pass here without passing through water. Ampanigala nang harga alay ata mi kemo so say yenzu yara mu ko ina suna tafia akwe dadi dede dengazo uta ahaske na buga bol na kuwa yana muna darwa onang gada ba aje ba kole kole yana nete muting yana abu na yana kasha yara amaya yenzu harga ata alhamdulillah. time to be alive. Just some years ago, many of the businesses and industries that are worth billions today did not even exist. Now, you could be in a village, somewhere that almost nobody has heard of, and become the next big thing worldwide. All you need is an idea, patience, persistence, and good internet access. So go on, get the other three, because we've got you covered on internet access with super fast data plans, no matter who you are or where you are. Maybe you're the one the world is waiting for to take us to our next level of success. There's only one way to find out, and we have full confidence that you will find the way. Why are we so sure? Let's just say that we have blind faith in your future. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1, super selfie, super battery. The Future Assured project of the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is carrying out free medical screening and distribution of food items at various IDP camps while ensuring the economic empowerment of women through training and skill acquisition. In recognition of her efforts, wives of governors have lent their voices and support. In Kogi State, we feel the impact of Future Assured, especially in women and children. The Future Assured program of Mrs. Aisha Mohammed Bahari, the wife of the president, has been very assuring and still reassuring in Sokoto State. It has impacted positively in the areas of humanity, especially women and children. Support the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGB Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. 
This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Welcome back. This is NTA Network News. The wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has emphasized the need for policies and programs that will reduce infant mortality. She was speaking at the 19th Ordinary General Assembly of the Africa First Ladies Against HIV AIDS. State House correspondent Aliu Kaber reports. Consolidating on the achievement of the organization of the African First Ladies against HIV AIDS Ofla within its years of existence remained a great source of concern by the members of the organization. To that regard, they took it upon themselves, employing various strategies in addressing numerous challenges of women and children, especially in education, health, empowerment, and nutrition. Taking this year's theme into consideration, building on the 15 years of engagement to harness the demographic dividend of Africa through promoting the needs of adolescents and their access to youth-friendly services, the First Lady's input, such as Rebecca Akufo-Ado of Ghana, Janet Musabeni of Uganda, Sia Kroma of Sierra Leone, as well as Nigeria's wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, was unprecedented. Issues surrounding the private sector participation in boosting health and economic well-being of women and young people in Africa was part of the communique. The wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, read the communique. We have a critical role to play and moral obligation to support policies of the government run by our husbands. Our roles as advocates include creating supportive and enabling environment for private sectors. Other issues in the communique comprises the support of various governments for the implementation of the Africa's Union Roadmap 2017 on harnessing the demographic dividend through investment in youth, as well as strong advocacy on public enlightenment for the adolescent girls to realize their full potentials, limiting cultures and beliefs, especially at the grassroots. Roman Tesfaye, the newly elected president of the organization. Across the continent, we need to reinvigorate our efforts to, rea to realize the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2063 Vision of Africa. And we're also happy to see that Her Excellency has been requested to read the communique of this very important uh, 19th session of the Ordinary General Assembly. So Nigeria is the leader and our mother is the leader, so we must lead and we've taken this kind of steps that are showing that we're doing very well. The meeting is expected to be conveyed next year. In Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Ali Ukbir, NTA News. The imperative of paying taxes regularly and on time was the central message at the maiden edition of the tax awareness campaign in Abuja, tagged Tax Thursday. Joy Uzo reports that the exercise is one of the strategies to actualize compliance for the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme. At the official launch of the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme VIDS in Abuja, Acting President Yemi Oshinbajo declared every Thursday as Tax Thursday dedicated to the sensitization of Nigerians on the importance of tax and its role in national development. At the maiden edition of the exercise in Abuja, Chairman Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, Tunde Fowler, led a team of staff from the Federal Ministry of Finance and other Nigerians to major business outlets within the metropolis. They said the campaign would be replicated in all 36 states of the Federation. And this new scheme basically says that if you declare your income, pay your taxes, you not pay interest, you not pay penalty, but with this first step to ensure that Nigeria becomes or becomes greater. After 31st of March, and you don't declare your income, you don't pay your taxes, then we'll prosecute you. 
The tax Thursday would continue for the next one year as part of efforts by the federal government to raise the consciousness of Nigerians on tax as a major source of revenue for the country, as well as deepen the commitment of government to delivering on its promises. The exercise is expected to capture 4 million taxpayers in the tax net and increase the revenue hall being generated from the over 14 million registered taxpayers. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. The National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office in the office of the Vice President has commenced a four-day training workshop for community-based target team for identification of poor and vulnerable groups in Kanu. Sani Basiru reports that the workshop, which attracted 180 participants from 15 local governments, called on participants to be committed and honest in the discharge of their duties. The National Social Safety Nets Program is a federal government initiative aimed to training community-based targeting teams for the development of single social register for poor and vulnerable across the nation. It is also designed to identify and assist poor households in Nigeria by providing financial and other supports. National Coordinator of the Safety Net, Peter Papka, announced that the federal government has signed a memorandum of understanding with Kano State Government to address poverty after meeting the standard to benefit from the program. The objective of this exercise is to train all the local government personnel that have been so identified to go back to the respective communities and use the same principles and practices of community engagement to identify the poor and the vulnerable. Declaring the workshop opened, Kano State Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, who was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Alaji Usman Alaji, commended federal government for the initiative and directs benefiting local governments to give necessary support to ensure the success of the program. Various stakeholders who spoke at the event expressed delight at the program, saying it will help in addressing poverty in the state. In Kano, Sani Basiru, NTA News. The Nasarawa state government is to embark on massive demolition of all illegal structures and the recertification of all land titles in the state to curb the excesses of land speculators. Governor Umar Tanku Almakura, who said this in Lafia, also restated government's commitment to prosecuting 85 land speculators already identified. Joshua Ojitu has details. The national state government had earlier in the year set up a high-powered tax force on verification of all land titles, demolition of illegal structures, and reclaiming of government land in Karu and other urban centers across the state. This followed increasing cases of encroachment into government lands, illegal buildings without approval, and abuse of master plan as well as activities of land speculators, especially in Karu local government area of the state, thereby converting the area into a slum. Receiving the three volumes report, Governor Umaru Tankwal Mokura decried activities of land speculators who have already formed a syndicate in Conaiva with some security personnel and judicial officers. That some of the certificates that are being held by some of these speculators are fake certificates. Government will embark full and total recertification of all titles in the Sarawak state. Governor Al Mokura said government will implement the report in, in order to restore the master plan of Karu and rid it of illegal and indiscriminate developments. In Lafia, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And now to the judiciary. The federal high court sitting in Abuja has ordered Senator Buruji Kashamu to submit himself to police investigations. The court, however, said since there was a subsisting order of a court on his extradition, it would be unlawful for the police to extradite him to the United States of America after he submits himself. This was the judgment of Justice Nnamdi Dingba on an application made by Senator Kashamu. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okeowu reports. Since 2010, Senator Buruji Kashamu has sought to prevent his extradition to the United States of America on alleged drug charges. Now, as Senator representing Ogun East Senatorial District of Ogun State, he has again sought the court to grant him a perpetual injunction stopping the police from arresting, detaining, and extraditing him. But the court found out during the trial that the police were after him based on a petition from Honorable Ladipupo Adebutu alleging electoral violence. It is for this that the court said that the police should be allowed to do its job 
ordering Senator Kashamu to submit himself to the authority of the Nigerian police while declining his three applications for perpetual injunction. But Justice Namdi Dingba also recognized that Kashamu's greatest fears, to use the judge's words, is his extradition. The judge therefore ordered that in investigating the petition, the police should not extradite him. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NTN News. Inculcating safety consciousness and habits in drivers through the driving school standardization program in order to reduce traffic crashes to the barest minimum in the country is the thrust of discussion at the maiden edition of the National Workshop for Operators of Driving Schools in Nigeria. Aliu Tuku reports that the training workshop is organized by the Federal Road Safety Corps in Abuja. Prior to the introduction of the Driving School Standardization Program, DSSP, driving schools across the country were training to be drivers without a standard operating procedure. This contributes to increase in accidents as many drivers lack the knowledge of road traffic signs and regulations. The DSSP, which commenced as an intervention by the Federal Road Safety Corps in 2010, is to set uniform standards for all drivers and improve driving skills as well as ensuring better road safety culture. Against this backdrop, the FRSC organized the workshop to facilitate capacity development for operators and to also address challenges that may erode values which the program is intended to achieve. The call to continue to wield the big stick against all operators that is intent to continue to subvert the program and make it beneficial for their new operators and the nation at large. This particular commendable initiative by Federal Road Safety Corps epitomizes once again its commitment to ensuring uncompromised standards. The workshop will also serve as a means of continuous monitoring and evaluation of the standardization program. In Abuja, Aliu Tukur, NTA News. The Center of Excellence has the next set of reports, and Jennifer is our guide. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Laurie. Good evening, and welcome to Lagos. Globalcom and Indi Indigenous Telecommunication Network, that prides itself as the Grand Masters of Data, has unveiled two exciting products which it says will add value to its subscribers across Nigeria. Management of Globalcom says the offer is part of its commitment to ensuring that subscribers enjoy unequal quality and affordable telecoms innovations on the GLOW network. Emil Dory witnessed the unveiling and compiled this report. The products are Glow Sharp Sharp E Top Up and Glow Cafe. The Sharp Sharp E Top Up offer, according to Globalcom, comes with many benefits on voice, data, and SMS, and is convenient, fast, and secure. It offers a lot of our subscribers value, value for money. I mean, imagine that when you get E Top Up, you get eight times the value of your recharge card on your phone. It's massive, it's huge. The beauty is that we give you enough bonus to use for calling, enough bonus to use for um, browsing and enough bonus to um, gifts our customer you know, of your choice. The Glow Cafe, on the other hand, is an entertainment mobile application with a complete 360-degree solution. The Glow Cafe app is designed with advanced technology to allow users control their accounts with ease and also manage all their telecom-related needs. The challenges customers have always had is about remembering multiple shortcuts, you know, to subscribe to individual services so um, glow cafe brings it all together you want to buy recharge card you want to buy data you want to subscribe to our value added services you always want to check your bills on your account or you want to handle you want customer care related matters handled you know it does all that and more you want access to video to music to games and more it's there the product also received endorsement of some of globalcom ambassadors it's very 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 like fast you know, so and it's different because it's only glue that has it. You see that everything that they are doing is just because they have um, the interest of the customers at heart. Global Cam Management say it will remain consistent in offering top quality world class brand experience to all its subscribers. That's it from Lagos, but we have more on the news after this timeout.
Please stay with us. It's right here on your phone. Welcome to the Glow Cafe. Come on in. It's buzzing in the Zanga. In here, anything is possible. Check out the menu and here are some of the odds items. Over here, you can buy credit, buy data, share data, borrow voice and data, give data. I'm a OB. Give it to him now. Be kind. Then there is Glow Music Cafe. More than 2 million Nigerian and African lamb pack. Glow has teamed up with the world's largest gaming catalog to bring you the Glow Game Cafe. And that's just a start. Check out the Glow Video Cafe. Countless clips, comedy and sports direct to your device. And when you thought things couldn't get easier, there's personal account management and Glow customer care right at your fingertips. You can get everything at Glow. Simply text Buzz to 105 to download the Glow Cafe app or go to your app store and search for Glow Cafe, the largest data network. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. This is to inform all candidates that applied for the 2017-2018 PTDF Overseas and Local Scholarship Schemes, MSC, that applicants have been shortlisted for the aptitude test in respect of the scholarship award. Applicants are advised to visit the application website using their PIN. Successful candidates will be able to log on to the site and print out their notification slip containing information on time and venue of their tests. The electronic aptitude test will hold simultaneously in designated centers across the country from Saturday, July 8, 2017, as follows. Potakot, Lagos, Abuja, Enugu, Bauchi, and Kaduna. Selection for the award will be based strictly on performance in the aptitude test. Oral interviews will be conducted for PhD full-time candidates on dates to be announced later. Management announcer. Cadbury Born Vita now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita. Prepare to win. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. This is not my indomie. Please, sir, it's not indomie. Don't call it indomie. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy our delicious, so very delicious indomie. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Win 150,000 Naira cash plus a bicycle instantly in the Indomie Cash for Scholarship promo. Spell out Indomie like no other. See pack for more details. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you. With Happy Cover from Leadway Assurance, you'll be covered for, well, almost anything. From automobile cover... Boys, pay nicely. ...to house... To personal cover, all with one single premium. Play nicely with your brother. That's it. We're going home. <gasps> that was close. Yes. <laughs> Luckily, I have happy cover. Oh, I have happy cover too. Sorry about your house. Actually, I have happy cover also. So. Navy needs happy. Live happy with Leadway Assurance. Ensuring happiness since 1970. Welcome back. You're still watching NTA Network News. And now, talking business. Central Bank of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Bankers Committee, prepare a watch list to cleanse the financial system. And federal government set to sell 20% shares of privatized companies. These and more with Buflang Dakok on Business News. Thank you for joining me on Business News. 
As part of efforts to ensure financial stability, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and Bankers Committee have put in place a framework for a watch list in Nigeria's financial system. The watch list is a database of bank customers who have been involved in confirmed fraudulent activities. The strategy is to address the increasing incidence of fraud and other unethical practices in order to restore confidence in the financial sector. The Debt Management Office recently made known the federal government's debt profile, which stands at 16.2 trillion naira from 10.9 trillion naira at the end of 2015. The 2017 budget alone is projecting a fiscal deficit estimated at 2.4 trillion naira, with domestic borrowing accounting for 53%, about 1.3 trillion naira. I think in order to fund key elements of the budget, especially those drivers of the economy in terms of infrastructure, it will be necessary to borrow, especially the economic fundamentals of the, of the country can support borrowing at this stage. The only caution that we need to put in place is to monitor what the states are doing in this direction. The states should not just borrow for borrowing's sake. There must be a mechanism for ensuring that the funds are deployed in those areas that drive the economy. What we are doing currently, if not carefully watched, is mortgaging the future of our children and our great-grandchildren. The budget as it is, through tending towards borrowing, is actually very risky. The federal government is set to sell up to 20% of its shares in some of the companies partially privatized on the Nigerian Stock Exchange to allow Nigerians own shares in them. The Director General of Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, said the divestment program would affect privatized firms in the petrochemical sector in the country. The Bureau has also called on the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Nigerian Stock Exchange to persuade the telecommunications companies in the country to go into the capital market. And equities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed on a positive note today as the All Share Index gained 0.16%. Thank you, Muplang. And Nigeria's Security and Civil Defense Corps intensifies fight against illegal oil business. Details of this and more with Dibabari in our Port Harcourt Network Center. Good evening and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps is intensifying the fight against illegal dealings in petroleum business in River State. Karuna Igoniko reports. Taking newsmen to the NSCDC exhibit here at Irebi, Commandant Mohamed Lawal Haruna said following various intelligence and cooperation from the public, the Corps impounded 34 trucks, three barges, four cars and arrested over 93 suspects with some already charged to court. He said 15 illegal refineries and three illegal dumps have been destroyed with one filling station sealed up. A case in point is the illegal petroleum dump at number 26 Happy Life Avenue, Mbano Camp Oyibo, a residential area where tanks filled with products suspected to be illegally refined diesel have been sealed up and two suspects arrested. Where we went to, it's very worrisome. That is, that is pure residential area. And then you have a place that looks like an illegal refinery. You can see uh, refined uh, AGO there. You have... Uh, we apologize for the poor pictures from our Port Harcourt next Network Center. And moving on now, foreign news sports are next on our lineup after this timeout. Stay with us. Be organized, trained, and fully equipped. We are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime. Wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive, be security conscious, 
Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAVDAC in reading the country of pet drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Welcome back to the last lap of NTA Network News. And now some foreign reports with Oku Ekpeyong. Hello there and welcome to this segment of the news. Well, the ranking for the month of July released Thursday to sit six on the continent with 715 points. The Super Eagles, which lost to South Africa in the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier in June, sit beneath Africa's highest ranked team, Egypt, on 24th position, while African champions Cameroon slipped four places down to 36th in the world. 2017 FIFA Confederations Cup champions overtake Brazil as the world's best team ahead of European champions Portugal in fourth and Belgium in tenth position. Nigeria's